so I was like, okay, let's make the let's take this like a step up and like have it be more like controlled. And I was like, fuck it, let's just do porn. Welcome, dear viewer, to the next one, God of Porn's exclusive porn star interview. I'm delighted to introduce to you the gorgeous, seductive, and talented performer, Adeline Gray. With 9.5 million video views and 30,000 subscribers on Pornhub alone, Adeline Gray is clearly enjoying much success and popularity in the porn world. Tune in today to hear about Adeline's entry into porn, as well as her favorite sex toys and fetishes, as well as her future in music and much more. Ladies and gentlemen, Adeline Gray. What do you enjoy most in your line of work? Um, I like having the creative freedom to do things that I want and being able to make a living off of it. Uh, I feel like one of the sexiest women in the world sometimes. Um, and I don't know, I just, I like that. I don't know, maybe this is going to sound arrogant, but it feels like it's an easy way to get attention, <laughs> um, which maybe some people think is a bad thing, but I've been having fun with it, and I think it's one of the best uh, decisions I've made. Three of the biggest challenges you've had to face in the industry? One of them happened at the very beginning, which was when I joined porn at 18. And I was told that I looked too old, which right off the bat was not great. Um, but a lot of people would have like given up there, um, but I didn't. And I kept trying and I still like had similar things. Like I always had like this big thigh tattoo. I had, I got that pretty much as soon as I turned 18. Um, so they were like, oh, you're not going to get much work with that tattoo. Um, basically, as a porn star, the expectation from producers, or at least some producers, is that you're an actor and therefore you're supposed to be able to fit into any possible role. But I don't really like doing that. And as a result... I'm probably not nearly as famous as I could be right now. Like, if I had no tattoos, I had, like, a normal haircut, um, I would be probably one of the top girls. Um, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just, um, I don't know. Maybe I'm over overthinking that, but I don't really need to be there. So I'm, I did all, all, everything I could at first um and now i'm doing what i want to do so i guess the ch the biggest challenge is getting over that big like that big hill to be able to do what you want and but you got to do it as soon as you can how did you start out in porn so on my 18th birthday i made a chatterbait account um and i was using the chatterbait money to buy stripper heels because my idea was that I was going to be a stripper to get through college. <laughs> and um, that was working for a little bit, but then I realized, well, I was studying to be a nurse. So, but with being a stripper, I realized that I don't think I could handle any other lifestyle than just being able to have my own schedule. Like this is the opposite of what being a nurse is like. Like they are worked to death, and here I am working three days a week tops if I have the energy. Well, first I did like nude modeling on like Model Mayhem, um, just because why not? Um, it wasn't like something that I thought I was gonna stick with. I just wanted to try it out. Um, but that kind of like felt like a waiting game for something bad to happen, even though it never did. So I was like, okay, let's make the let's take this like a step up and like have it be more like controlled. And I was like, fuck it, let's just do porn. Um, so around this time, I had discovered who Johnny Sins was, and I thought he was really hot, and I thought it would be pretty cool if I would have sex with him on camera. Um, 
so I was trying to get into porn, <laughs> not just for that reason, but, you know, it was a motivating factor. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, pretty much that, that winter, it was, I think I started during, like, winter break, um, but then by the time the second semester was happening, I realized I can't keep this all up, and I dropped out of college. <laughs> and honestly, like, that was such an easy decision for me to make at the time. Like, to a lot of people, it's like, oh my god, think of all of the opportunities you've washed down the drain, but now I moved from Minnesota to Las Vegas. I have my own apartment. Um, I have my band I'm working on. It's been like so like I didn't even think I would make it this far in this industry. They say most girls have a shelf life of one year, but which is sounds really brutal. I ha I have no idea if it's actually true or not, but that's what I was always told. And I was thinking, okay, this is probably just gonna be like a quick one and done thing, but I'm sticking with it. I'm still getting professional shoots. Um, I'm just pickier with what I choose and doing my own thing. Do you prefer solo or studio work? So that's a tough question to answer because when the studio work is something that I want to do, like when I work with Alterotic, that is always like the best in my opinion. Um, it's like professionally shot, but it gets rid of like all of all of the bullshit that I don't like to deal with. Um, like Ivan, who is uh, the director in Alterotic, he is one of my favorite people. Um, he recently got into like the Avian Hall of Fame, um, finally, um, which he totally deserves. Um, but I like having my solos, my like, you know, what I shoot because I don't know, it's convenient, I guess. I don't have to. Well, I do have to sometimes wait for other people to be ready if it's with other people. But, you know, part of the reason why we have these jobs is because, like, it's it, the flexibility is unrivaled. Uh, things happen all the time. Um, and unfortunately, that means a lot of things get canceled. But that's just kind of how it goes. At least that's what I've learned. I try not to cancel anything, but sometimes you just have to, like, you know, when, you're, when your work depends so much on your body, um, if your body is feeling even just, like, a little bit off, that can ruin the whole scene. But to specifically answer the question, I guess it really depends on what the content is. But if I had to pick one, um, it would probably be my own stuff because that's what my fans come to me to see. Could you tell me more about your studio work? Uh, Alterotic. Uh, they have kind of like an interesting history because they've changed gears so much, but Ivan has done it. He has made so many award-winning movies or at least nominated. Um, right now uh, we're working on Ho Hunters. I don't know if it's Ho Hunters 2 or 3, but it's super funny. Um, there's always Ink Motel, which has some kind of crazy storyline. I there are so many plot lines, I don't even know how, how to get into it. But Alterotic is probably my favorite company to work with, but they work on a like trade basis. So they don't pay, mostly because they just don't make that kind of money. But they give you all the content, and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and honestly, that's, that's what I want. Um, uh, I do have really good experiences with other other um, productions, though. Like, fans from Girlfriend Films seem to really enjoy me. Else. I know there are some other studios who want to work with me, but for one reason or another, it just hasn't worked out yet. Um, 
I do have a really fond memory working with Bang Bros way back in the day. It was for their sister site, Roadside XXX. And that's the one with the golf cart that was like all over Pornhub um, for a while. And even though that one is really old, it was really fun to do. I just liked how stupid it was. <laughs> Could you give some advice for solo creators? Um, most people, you know, you start amateur, go on like your local Reddit gone wild subreddit um, or maybe Tinder. But you got to be careful of Tinder because they like the band people. Um, just start creating stuff. Promote it. I think Reddit is the way to go, but I'm not very good at it. So I can't really give you any advice there. I'm just thinking about what my amateur friends do. Um, post on like every clip site. Many vids, clips for sale. How do you feel about the rise of models on Instagram and OnlyFans models? I only have an issue with it if they think they're better than other forms of sex workers. Like, I think that people should be able to work within their own comfort zone. And if they're making a living off of it, as long as they're not, like, stepping on the people like around them all the power to them like i think if i remember right there are bikini models on only fans that make way more than full out porn stars and i say good for them um, that would be pretty cool but i like being naked so it's like mm, yeah but like i'm not better than her for being naked and you know she's not better than me for keeping a bikini on um as far as Instagram and social media, it's tough because that's like, it's a form of like advertising, but it can also really get to your head. What has been the most beneficial platform? I think OnlyFans has been the most overall beneficial for me because that is my primary source of income. However, Twitter is also great for connecting with, like, the majority of your fans. But that's also tough because not everybody's on Twitter. So I see, like, on Pornhub, I have, like, 8 million views. Most of those people are going to forget about me. They're just on Pornhub to, you know, get a quick wink and move on. And I say all the power to them. But <laughs> um, it's hard to know how many fans I have, but... The ones who are on my OnlyFans are the ones that are there specifically for me. Do you have a partner? Um, I do not have a boyfriend. I have not had one since high school, and that has been a deliberate choice of mine. Because people are like, oh my gosh, if you're single and there's no hope for the rest of us, I'm like, that's very sweet, but this has been a decision. Um, not even a work decision, like not even like fantasy wise because when I do get into a relationship I'll probably like mention it but I want my I do want to have some degree of separation between my personal and my work life um, I do have a uh, friend with benefits but it's not nothing romantic or anything um, and it's not something like that's like purely off-camera stuff um, again having a little bit of separation is it related to working in the porn industry? There's a lot of ways to answer that. It's, I do want to focus more, like, on my career first, but it's not because, like, it's not because I'm in porn. I don't want a boyfriend. It, it's like, I don't know how to describe it. I just, I don't feel the desire for one right now, but I do want one one day. What about online hate and harassment from other models? Yeah, I guess I didn't even think about that because I haven't really encountered it yet. I have had drama, but it wasn't like a heated argument or anything. And it wasn't like everything that went on happened like behind the scenes and it wasn't even a big deal afterwards. So... Have you ever had a bad experience with a fan or have a fan cross a boundary? Um, 
I'm lucky enough that I have never been doxxed, but that is one of my biggest fears. Um, but honestly, I'm probably going to be the one who accidentally does it myself one day. Like, there's going to be something in the background that has my information, and I'm going to be stupid. Um, that hasn't happened yet. But at the apartments I was living at before this one, I had briefly had a neighbor who kept trying to get into my apartment. And I think he was either just on drugs or had frequent episodes of psychosis. Um, but yeah, he got evicted pretty quickly after that. Um, I think yeah, he was like playing super loud music at like 2 a.m. Like, I don't think it was like a personal thing, but um, I have met fans in public, but they've always been super respectful um we may or may not take a picture together and then just you know go about our business do you have a favorite fan yeah so my favorite fan right now his name is brad we talk pretty much every day he's always buying me stuff off my amazon wish list um he tips me lunch every day and he's been super supportive with my band. He's bought us a lot of my equipment. Um, and honestly, he's just, I'm so thankful he found me. Uh, and he's going to be like, oh, I'm so glad I found you. But yeah, he's, he's pretty great. And I'm thankful to have him. Are you kinky in real life? So um, in my personal life, I am significantly more kinky than I am on camera. Um, that comes down to more of like what I'm comfortable with the public seeing and also what I'm comfortable with people saying about me. But I will talk about what I like in my personal life. That's, um, I like, uh, I am a masochist, but the type of pain that I like is different than on camera versus, you know, in real life. Um, I like bites and scratches in real life, but on camera, it's more of like vloggers, paddles, and only like gently. Um, but uh, either way, I like restraints, but it just ends up looking differently depending on what I'm doing. Like, on camera, it's probably going to be what looks pretty um, within, like, comfortability reasons. But then uh, in person, it's, like, whatever ends up happening. Like, if I have my cuffs here, um, I'm not, like, there's no really set positions. It's just whatever. It's primal. I think that's the word for it. Do you have any favorite sex toys? Yeah, um, my doxy wand is actually right here. Where is it? Is it here? Did I move it? Well, okay, I don't know where it is right now. But it's one of those just, like, big old wands. It's my go-to because I can get off in, like, two minutes. <laughs> but, um, I also really like fantasy dildos. So if I'm trying to have more of, like, an experience rather than like a two minute one and done, um, then I'll use one of those. I tend to use those in my content a lot too. Could you tell me a bit more about your favorite positions in productions? Um, yeah, so actually in both real life and, um, and productions, uh, doggy style is my favorite. It's the easiest way to make me come, uh, at least with a dick involved. It just, I don't know, I guess the right angle. Um, I don't have to do much of anything. <laughs> um, I'd say cowgirl is fun, but exhausting. So I don't know, I need to work on my stamina. But <laughs> is there anything else that that you might be working on these days? Yeah, actually, um, this is something that hasn't happened yet, but it will be happening soon. Um, I have a partnership with Fans Utopia, 
um, which is a website that sells things like used panties, uh, used socks, shoes, that some some things that may have been on set or just you know day to day whatever um so it's also a partnership with the local talent podcast um and hopefully soon i should be having some things for sale uh so that's at fancytopia.com i guess you can follow my band on instagram at lies for attention um or twitter at lies the number four attention underscore um and yeah i'm hoping that's gonna be i'm hoping to have some stuff available on streaming platforms by the end of 2023 um but yeah it's a process i've been talking about it forever and to an outside view it probably seems like nothing is happening but things are happening it's just slow if you enjoyed this video, hit like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for even more exclusive content. Tell me in the comments what questions you would ask a porn star, and the best questions might be added to upcoming interviews.